Like, bam, we're live ish. That? Oh, God, no. <laughs> no, no. I don't know what to change it to. That one wasn't, that one wasn't bad. What, what about this one? No, this one. That one's not, that was not as bad. Not that one. <laughs> I, I used to have one that was just like ticking. Oh, remember when I had the Darth Vader breathing? Yeah. What was wrong with that? I don't know. Why'd you change it? Oh, how oh. about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, oh, wait. Oh, shit. There's a whole other, like, one that. No. A train? That last one sounded like a casino, a slot, slot machine at a casino. Oh, wait, how about this one? Yeah, that's good. Wait, was that what it was? Uh, I think that's what it was back in the day. Oh, right? yeah. That one sounds good. It just can't be super was... sharp when it rings. Okay, so it's either this or this. I, I kind of like the second one. Okay, me too. Okay, let's try Oh. Hi. Holy shit. Back to your I thought you escaped. <laughs> He's back in the hostage bunker. I thought you fucking escaped. <laughs> He's back in the hostage bunker. What the fuck is going on? Sorry. Yeah. They won't Can you be in the show today? I'm just angry. Yeah, sure. All right. I'm in a bunker, so. He's so easy these days. He's been subdued. If he got peel peeled back the layers of Caleb's ego. Caleb's been up for 36 hours. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like it, dude. Yesterday. Uh, and then I just stayed up until like this morning. Oh, I, I guess today. My shit. Like this, this afternoon. <clears throat> That's crazy. I thought I was bad. <laughs> I want to read to you this. Um... DM someone sent me. I, I got approval for it. Because, uh, um, you know, I was looking for games content. The whole games content thing is so funny. There's so much... Man, man where it, it, it's, it's like the wild, wild west meets the um, uh, home for dis mentally disabled adults. Like, the, the wild, wild west is just me. And the home for mentally disabled adults is CrossFit HQ. Did, did, you, did you know that they've had their games live stream pulled down already? <laughs> <laughs> dude no i tried to find it i was like oh i just want to go look for it and it is gone i just wanted to rewatch a little bit of it there's nothing uh, there who, it's no. all like granite who, games and touring pro who is running crossfit media there's the, what a mess hey and the thing is is that they their their pr guy andrew weinstein over there he thrives off of problems so you're only like you bring a, a cat and a snake home to catch rats right and then if there's no rats then fucking what are the cat and the snake gonna do right that that's what this dude Funny is they have a pr guy there that only functions if there's problems and man do they create a lot of problems for themselves 15 years and and, and they're still getting shit pulled down off of youtube the irony is is that those fuckers all i've done is promote them even when i talk shit about them all it does is promote them and help them and they had my shit pulled down they went out of their way some guy i looked at um some guy named Stuart Harris at CrossFit.com. Mm -hmm. He's the, he he's the one that reported. He's the one. I'm sure he's on the legal team there. He's the one that had our video pulled down when we were doing the Tory and Pro thing. Ah, good dude. Yeah, what a good dude. But good it's dude. But but I, like that dude. That dude should be fucking let go. Haynes should be let go. Um, the, whoever whoever slept their way to, um had sex uh, uh while in wedlock with other employees there and slept their way to the top. Uh, it, but yet walks around um, priding themselves on being a strong woman. Yeah. That person you know, should be let go. From military for that. For what? Banging? R fucking for, some dude? Uh, yeah. Extra marital relations or something like that. Really? So if you had, if you, if some dude had sex with your wife, even though she's not yeah, in the military, and if you reported him, you, he would be toast? Yeah. If you can prove it, then you get, you get disarmably discharged. 
I'm just so you know, I'm t- I, I, I think I, I don't mean to meddle in other people's business. Like, sex is a powerful, powerful uh, component of life, and people should be able to do what they do. But as I've matured, there's this thing you have to realize about leadership and about about relationships. So, for example, if I'm friends with Matt and his uh, fiance, and I'm friends with Caleb and his wife, and we hang out, and there's like four other couples, and we hang out, we're, we all hang out regularly together. We're the group, right? And we're, you know, there's there's the Christians, and there's the Scientologists, and there's the Muslims, and we're we're all different, and and, and but we're all friends. We know each other, and we're friends because we have kids. We go to the park, all that shit. You have to understand once you have kids, that's the way life is. And then all of a sudden, Caleb and his wife get a fucking divorce. All the other couples, that that fucking hits them so fucking hard. They're like, oh shit. Because it makes all of us realize our relationships are vulnerable. Then we find out that it was because Caleb's wife was cheating. I'm sorry, Caleb, to use you as an example. What that does is then all the wives now are like telling the husbands, are you cheating? And so when you have people in your ranks that are behaving like that, basically liars – and and um and, and 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 stomping on other people's feelings, it, it it fucks everything up. It's not that it's not that it's just not what leaders do. It, it's a um it, and you and you know you don't want the president fucking out banging a bunch of people because then that compromise and if he if he's not honest about it because we judge people for that and if you're not honest about it it compromises the whole national security. What if we find out that um there's what if the Russians found out that Biden likes getting naked with the Chippendales and fucking running a train with them but he doesn't want anyone to know so then uh hypothetically of course so then they tell him hey you better do this this and this around the ukraine or else we're going to release the fucking uh monkey pox party you had with the chippendales and it's like and so when you have someone at hq uh like this person who who banged their way to the top but what's crazy too is they celebrate what a strong woman they are and all this shit but anyway i digress I, you can't have a media team who it's the biggest i mean yesterday was the biggest show in seven podcast history it was nuts i think there were almost a hundred thousand um downloads from our live views just on youtube joe biden is one good bang away from being in a casket say that again caleb just after the show like after it was over we had a shitload too yeah 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 i, I mean it was nuts it's nuts so i so that means it's the biggest day probably in the, for for CrossFit media because we'll, we're fucking just piggybacking off of their shit, and and then to have your feed pulled down. I mean, if I'm the sponsors and I'm the uh, if I'm anyone involved, I'm I'm tripping. Well, who yeah, did I get in bed luck. with? No. Has that ever happened before? Yes, 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 um, yes. yes. Yes, it's, de- it's definitely it's definitely happened before. Should not be ha- should not be happening on, on day one of the games. Should not be happening day one of the games. Definitely happened before. I think I remember the first time it happened. It was one of those events we did in San Jose. It was like, what was it like when we we did like the international game shit? Like the what's that called? The invite? Not the invite? Is that the invitational? It was invitational. On- yeah. Yeah. When we did invitational. It was like Europe and USA and Australia. Uh, speak to me from the desert. Speak. Hey, Sivan, massive fan from the Middle East. Qatar. Have you been here before? I have not been to Qatar. Awesome. Well, we hope to welcome you one day. I just Thank want to you. ask, can you get Mal O'Brien onto the show? Because I'm sure she's going to win this weekend. And she'd be great for the show. Um, I've never even heard Mal O'Brien talk. <laughs> <laughs> on any that's actually, show that's actually true that's I, I, I couldn't point. tell you what she sounds like i couldn't tell you um i send All out true. invitations to everyone's invited to the show it's my it's my honor to have anyone on the show i'd love to have Freya uh, moose Bruger on the show i'd love to have mal o'brien i'd love to have jorge navarro i'd love to have your mom um uh, mal o'brien would be great matt fraser would be great um uh well in, Jake Marconi, I had him on. That Matt, wasn't so great. Say that again. In, in 2016, Matt also didn't do any interviews. He was just grinding through the games. Yeah. So you managed to get him onto your podcast. Yeah, that was. But but I but since everything's yeah, I agree. I, I I don't I don't um. Here's the thing too. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I, I can only speculate why she hasn't come on the show. I do think that everyone who comes on the show, no matter like what your poli- – I really do believe this. No matter what your political b- 
spend is, whether you like me or hate me, when you come on the show, your value goes up. I think we've only had one guest where yeah. they came on and it went sideways for them. And it was, and it was James Fitzgerald and it was towards the end of the podcast. And um, I asked him what the difference is between, I told him I didn't know the difference. Oh, he was saying that his program customizes workouts for, um, for, for their staff for their uh, clients. What's he do? OPEX. He said, OPEX does customization training. And I go, so does CrossFit. And he rolled his eyes and kind of like, was like, Oh, you're one of those that doesn't know the difference. And that I don't, I don't mind, but the, um, uh, cause I'm fine being stupid and someone rolling their eyes at me. Um, I have kids. They do that <laughs> shit to me all the time, but the audience didn't like it. But other than that, the other 499 guests we've had on, have walked away looking great. I mean, look at fucking um, people have come on the show, slap me around. Annie Thor's daughter slapped me around. Was like, yeah, yo, uh, if you say uh, one word about well, catching, I'll fuck you up. Yeah, Laura Horvath slapped me around. <laughs> it's like, just come on here. I'm the I'm the heel. Just come like you, you'll 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 leave looking great. Well, I mean, I'm a bottomless pit of, of fucking love and pure energy. So, sorry, say that again. I was getting off on myself. Say it again. <laughs> if, if you get Mal O'Brien on the show, it'll be the most viewed show on your channel. I'm sure. Yeah, okay. she's no, I think, she's I think it else. already is the most viewed. I think, oh, 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 you're saying that she'll be more no, popular no. than any other guest. Well, hey, let me tell you what's more popular than any guests. When it rains, when, the, when CrossFit Games has no strategy for their media and they don't put out any content worth watching and then it rains yeah. and everyone has to leave their dumbass feed. That, I mean, we, we, I think we had 30,000 viewers or something yesterday. So... Well, keep nice. up the great efforts on your podcast because this Thank is you. the closest we could get to behind the scenes. That's okay. probably the best content out there for CrossFit. Thank and you. hope you could go there someday and, and, and do your own independent thing. And, God, yeah, I hope not. Please it. stop asking. Please don't pray for that. <laughs> can you just pray that... Um, well, I'd love to know why. <laughs> can you just pray that like a chest full of a billion dollars falls on me? <laughs> falls like, next to you. Like next, to you, yeah, you. next to me. Next to you. Yeah. If you're going to pray for me, pray for that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I ask Don, Don, you uh, see. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Don. Don't don't call about the games anymore. You're on timeout, Cater, Cutter. That's that's it. No games talk starts with games talk. <laughs> so what what a mess that they that the yesterday's games shit is down. But well, that's just good for us again. But Great I run. swear, I swear, you better not say a thing about the games. Hi, how can I help you? Hey, is this Savon? It depends on what your question is. <laughs> uh, uh, it, I'm a, the, the cre I'll be a, I call myself the crazy Canadian. It's just a, you want no games talk, so I had a question for you. Oh, thank you. Know, you. you yes, this is Savon. Nice to hear yeah. from you, uh, CC. <laughs> yeah, my name is Rob. My name is Rob. I'm, I'm from Canada, so you know, just Hi. just Hi. a little. Uh, Hi, we do have we do have sunshine once in a, once in a while. Anyways, the question I had: How's uh, your uh, uh, How's your myocarditis doing? I don't have it. Okay, sorry. Good. No, that's, I'm, I'm other, sorry. that's Rob number two. Okay. Uh, I think yesterday people were more excited to watch the post your post show than watching the actual games. <laughs> it was such an awesome day for you guys. Anyways, thank you. The games were the, the games shit. were. I thought you said you weren't going to talk about the games, but you did. The games were awesome. No, no, yesterday. no, no. I got, I really I got a question it. outside okay, of the okay, games. Okay, okay. It was. It was an excellent day. It, was, it truly was an excellent day. More Travis um, Mayer. If we would have had more Travis Mayer, it would have been perfect. We need way more Travis Mayer. But go on. Yeah, I had a question for, and, and maybe uh, Susan can, can, and Susan was great yesterday, but this is a question about the fitness industry. I sent you a message on your last couple of live calls ago. F45 recently had a plummet, 60% plummet on their stock. They fired the CEO, 110 staff laid off, shutting down a bunch of locations. And I know you're on their journey. You've done one. Uh, your first uh, affiliate interview was excellent with that fellow Chris, and he was you know, true and down to earth. And where I know I have a, someone connected to the Orange Theory world that they're seeing memberships declining. So my question is, are, when the pandemic occurred and people shifted to either Zoom calls, Zoom workouts, or they bought Peloton or whatever they did, bought a bunch of barbells and stuff, are people truly shifting to working at home? Or are we getting less fit and people aren't going to the gym and What's how do we get people back in the gym and what's what, what's the outlook for the fitness industry for the average Joe? Well, if I can answer this, I actually think it has nothing to do with the garage gyms. 
I think it has everything to do with $10 gas prices in California. I mean, the cost of living has risen and um, we're entering this recession, even though the White House doesn't want to admit it right now. But by definition, we are now in a recession with two down quarters in a row of GDP. And I just think that people's extra you know, income is evaporating. And when that happens, those first things that go is stuff like the gym memberships. And especially when you talk about Orange Theory or F45, because they usually lack community in a sense. So the bonds are not as tight as it would be at a CrossFit affiliate. And it's just easy to let it go. Hey, we're, you know, we're down several hundred dollars this month. What are we going to do? Well, I haven't been to F45 in a while. I could just run on my own. Let's cut the membership off. So that's what, what I think it has more to do with it. It's just like a circuit training. Mark Wahlberg was a big investor in it. Oh. Yeah, they just do. I mean, most, like, there is really people, good news for CrossFit, affiliate. though. There is really good news for HQ. I don't know if it's good for the affiliates, but um, when in a recession, CrossFit explodes. It's, yeah. It, it, so, it, so seminar sales will begin to skyrocket, especially if they work it right. They really have to work it right. And just, and, and, and keep, keep, keep their uh, eye on the ball here. Um, I, and I, but I think Nicole Carroll knows that if she can get to uh, working with the right people in media and get it out there, that's when, when shit hits the fan and pe people will turn to their uh, bodies and making themselves better. And we, we, that the recession of 2008 was absolutely fantastic for CrossFit Inc. Well, I think at this time, people um, thrive for a community. So if there's something more than just a workout, they see more value in it. So if I have all my friends go there and I'm very closely tight knit with everybody at my CrossFit affiliate, it's going to be much harder for me. I'm valuing that much higher than I am going to 45 and doing a bunch of weird, you know, quarter squats and stuff like that with a bunch of people that I don't really talk to that much and then just kind of show up for my hour and leave. So I think that's the biggest differentiator between these franchises. Also too, when you're speaking about valuation, a lot of times uh, businesses like that will start to just go after capital. They'll just go after a bunch of money. And so it gets hyped up a bunch. And then when that doesn't materialize, it crashes really hard. Kind of like we saw with Peloton. People overvalued it because they said, this is it. Everybody's working out at home. It's going to last for free forever. So all this money came into Peloton. All these investors came into Peloton. And then once that started to decline, they said, oh, wait, this isn't going to last. Let's all pull our money out. And then you see a cascade effect as it just continues to plummet. And I think that's just what we're seeing. But to Sevon's point, 2001, CrossFit hits the uh, internet right after the dot-com bus. 2008, 2009, CrossFit affiliate ships skyrockets right after the market crash. And so if H Super low barrier to entry, uh, super positive, super upbeat, people who aren't victims, people who want to better themselves, people who get high off of the fucking dopamine rush of working. It's just... It's a good place to be. And you can justify being broke while running across the gym because you're doing God's work. You have the cure for the world's most vexing problem. And you're part of a community, like Sousa said. So it, the, the CrossFit can really be recession-proof, but um, but the brunt of it, will, a, a lot of the brunt will fall on the affiliates. I mean, d dude, let's face it. From 2018 to 20, um, uh, by getting rid of the media team, CrossFit HQ, and I was part of that, this team, I, I ain't going to hide from it. We fucking bent the affiliates over. Then from 2000 to 2022, they stuck an apple in your mouth and fucking prolapsed your anus by bringing Rosa on and firing Dave Castro. So first, the firing Greg and, and that dipshit CEO who is cheating on his wife and with another lady who was there is cheating on his on her husband. They, they fired the media team. That was affiliates getting bent over. 2020-22, Rosa and, and the venture Berkshire knuckleheads prolapsed your anus. And now you guys are just kind of sitting there with your fucking intestines hanging out of your asshole and you're just wondering what's going to happen next. And, and that, that and that's – uh, whatever I, I just i just like the prolapse well, that's when the shit gets turned one? inside out right i've never seen one but. it's like yeah it's just cry, like when someone signs up to become an affiliate obviously land costs are different rent costs for each where else across the world is very that's a variable cost you can't control but the crossfit provide a potential affiliate the uh mathematical formula like how many people they need the estimated cost to start up the gym so they kind of see where they're going to be at when they start when they're going to open up the gym no, and that's the best part about it. All you're paying for is a licensing fee. They're not going to tell you what to do. That is up to you and how you want to run it. Plus, two, you see affiliates all over. I could open an affiliate in my garage. So what's going to be the economics on that, right? They, it's going to differ they, from place to place. 
they do give you a book. They, they do have this book that I, I, the 20 affiliates who've told me about it have said it's a complete sham and a pile of shit. I've only started looking at it. It's called the Affiliate Playbook. Um, it's some sort of tool that the affiliates are supposed to use. Uh, but what's funny is in there, the first thing that I opened it and I saw is a quote from Eric Rosa. A, a dude who bought the co the company in a uh, as kind of like a midlife crisis temper tantrum, and uh, and, and he's giving business advice on uh, <laughs> on how to run a gym. I could just go off forever <laughs> about that, but it's it's just it, I. I think it's a very noble profession if you get into CrossFit. Extremely noble. Like basically what you you are doing God's work. You're you're it is really what Greg Glassman said. It's lifeboats. And if you can figure out how to pull it off, you should do it. And we're gonna do this affiliate series, and I think it's gonna be huge and it's give people a lot of uh, good help and advice. But I think it's gonna also expose them some things that aren't so so uh pretty. Like like it's like it's a lot of hard work. But maybe you shouldn't be doing anything in life unless it is hard work. So um no no it's great stuff and i i really enjoy it so thanks for that guys yeah uh, taking your l1 your though you won't regret it you don't need to have to open a gym if you have kids and you haven't taken your l1 you're 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 neglecting your kids i think it's tantamount to not keep teaching your kids how to swim two-thirds of this planet is water you have kids teach them how to swim inoculate them from drowning go to your l1 get that information start moving every day in front of your kids get that nutrition advice from them Learn about the culture that they disseminate there, which is huge. You won't get it online or anything else. Take that L1. And then, you, you know, if you decide to open up a gym later, or, but but either way, you can't go wrong with your L1. It's, it's – you will save someone – if you take your L1, you'll probably end up saving someone's life and not know it. I can't – I promise you. On accident, you will save someone's life. You will add, you will add my, 15 in my, years in my to 10. Province, I see one coming up in September, so I may have to. I yeah. may have to. I've been working on it for years, but I've never been a full-on crossroader guy. I do. I like. I take. I take uh, nuggets of concepts. Like I really like the twenty-one fifteen nine concept, and I build it into my routine. But thanks, dude. Yeah. Thanks. The, talk, to you, talk to you later. Bye. The other thing too, I just seen a couple comments. There have been people in here who are saying like. Um, Oh, it's it's most CrossFit gyms are unprofitable and stuff like that. And that's just the cost of the low barrier to entry because most of the people that are getting into business, and I learned this the hard way, and if you could talk to a lot of affiliate owners that have been around a long time, owning a job and owning a business, I'm getting an echo. Call or mute, mute your YouTube before I mute your ass. Thank job you. Job and you. owning a business. Automatic hang up. <laughs> get your shit together but okay, the difference between owning a job and owning a business is very vast and most of the trainers that get into this business they do it like seven said out of the love of just coming in and helping people and what ends up happening is they end up owning a job not a business and those two those are two very different things uh craig white says l1 is way overrated hey man i bet you i have added uh, a million years to people's lives because of the L1, because of what L1 I learned is, there and what I was able to share. So if you think that's overrated, I, 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 I'm I'm open to it, but I don't. Fuck, and here's man. this, Craig, burden of proof is on you. Show us something better, my friend. Show us something better for your cost of money that will give you that yeah, much ROI on Mr. your health White. and those around you. Don't come at me with the L1. That's my – you're triggering me, Craig. You're triggering yeah. me. Bill, Billy, Mr. Kid, hi. Honor to speak to you. Hey, Sam, how are you? Good, how are you? Yeah, good to hear from you. Here to talk about abortion. You wanted something not CrossFit, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Okay, what do you got? Do I have to ask you a question? Or are you going to tell me something? I, I'll throw something at you, at you, and you can tell me what you think. Okay. But I think you, I think you understand that abortion is the deliberate ending of an innocent human life. Okay. But I think, I think what we're, what, what you and I perhaps disagree, is on the nature of law. Okay. In our country. Okay. Is if, if laws do not have moral integrity, then there is no reason to follow them. Then they are just applications who, of polit political power. Who establishes so the morality? If, if, who, who establishes the morality God. in law? Okay. So God, God, God establishes the morality and who speaks God's well, word and how does that definition go clear across everybody? Because your God is different well, than well, my well, God, is different than Sevon's God, is different than the God from the people across the country. So how do we first define that, God and the, that, and the that, morality? I mean, we, we, may, we may have different conceptions of God, but there is one. There's one. There, but let's, let's just step back. 
it is about the, you the natural it. law. You got to define it. Yeah, so I'm getting there. I'm getting there. So if, if we understand the world to be created, if we understand every human being to be a manifestation of, of God's creation, something that he saw as good, then it is incumbent on us as people, both individually and collectively, to recognize the dignity in every human person. And so laws should be oriented to that end on the dignity of every human person. Will, did you hear that and, show and so with Jay? This, did you hear that show with Jay Neasy that we had on Jay Nara? And he and he talked about no, something I, called I objective that. morality. And I go, what's that? And he said, objective morality, for example, is like you don't want to be killed. And so you and so therefore you shouldn't kill. And that's objective morality. And I was like, oh, I fucking really like that. I think that's kind of what you're saying, too. Right. I, I think so. I mean, I think you, the, all four of us can can agree that there are there is objectively good and evil things in the world or else I go back to my original point. It is. Hey, sorry, sorry, what, Will. So, sorry, Will. I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm so sorry, dude. Get him, Seven. Susa yeah. comes in hot with saying because we can't agree on religion, we should just keep killing babies. He did, like, dude, he didn't even like. That's not even close to what he said. What do you call it? World like, class that, in your head. That, like Floyd nineteen, <laughs> motherfucker. Like, what's that mean? Like, dude, come on, Judah, come on. Okay, go ahead, Will. Go on. Sorry. I, I, I mean, frankly, I, I, I don't, I don't think Susa meant that. No. But I think that's what? the that's the logical conclusion. That's the logical conclusion. Oh, of, I don't think so. He just asked, he was asking questions for definition. You got to define, man. That's what I'm saying. But, when you say but, something arbitrary, like like God defines morality, there's the, the, it's not defined in a sense that we could govern a whole entire society by because the definition of God and morality differs. I mean, go to certain religions as they've evolved over the years. And a few years ago, if you thought one way they would they would be stoning you burying you in the ground and throwing rocks at your head and years later that changes do you understand well, so, so until you them, define I I'd, it i'd turn the someone, i'd turn the question back on you how how to how should we ground our concept of morality if I, if it is not a, a, a natural understanding of god's creation what should we use? Hey, Will, to people understand? don't even want morality. I, man, I, I mean, I like your, I like what you're saying, but I'm concerned that we're we're with cavemen that they don't even see the value of morality anymore. Like they don't like. Oh, uh, I agree. Or, with you. or honor or code or I mean, these are people who, um, who are defend. People are defending their weakness. There's people out there saying that as long as you're happy, it's okay to be 300 pounds overweight. No, it's okay to be 300, yeah. 300 pounds overweight because you're, uh, um, you're, uh, you have autonomy, but, th but they're lying to themselves that there's happiness there. There is not. We know that. Well, and, that, and that's why I don't think autonomy or freedom are goods in of themselves. The ability to do whatever you want is not good. And, and, is, and, and, that, and that exact thing that you just said is why this country is so great. Because they're because of people like you, and that's the thing that people don't understand. We don't we don't so when people say the United States isn't free, thank God it's not free. Because if it were completely free, and, and by that by that by that I mean even if like like a, like you heard Elizabeth Warren say the majority of people, the majority of people in this country want abortion to be legal, the Supreme Court, like that that's not what this country is built on. This country, if the majority of people wanted slavery. You still can't put it into effect because well, it's exactly. not moral. It's what Will is saying. It's not fucking moral. This country, we can't vote in slavery. That's fucking insanity. Amen. And our founders were so fucking smart. And, and this is what I'm defending you a little here, Will, or explaining because they fucking believed in this God moral code that Will's talking about and a bunch of other crazy people believe, which I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, and I don't actually disagree <laughs> disagree with your premise at all, Will. I don't disagree with your premise at all. I actually agree with it, but the thing is, is that in order for that that argument to be really true, and you're asking like, well, then what is it? Everything's great. No, we start with the truth, and we start with really defining words, and then operating off those definitions, so we're all on the same sheet of music. So that's all. It was just a challenge yeah. on that, not a challenge on your premise. I actually agree overall with your premise, but we have to first really accurately define that if we're going to govern society by it. So we're all on the same sheet of music. I agree. Cause most people who believe in God are fucking morons.
but but I'm also okay with that too. I'm I'm like okay with I, I don't mind sharing the world with morons. Especially yeah, I, especially if their imaginary god's a good one. Fuck. And he's keeping them in check. Yeah, he is a good one. I yeah. mean, the, you you're able to recognize the the love for your kids and your wife and you're also able to recognize the beauty in creation so you understand that men are men and women are women regardless of what they may think. You you know, there is there is a coherence to the world that we can understand. And I don't think that coherence would exist if if the world were merely a scientific accident and not the result of a loving creator who made us in his image. Hey, um, I, and so if, it, go ahead, go ahead. There, well, I had this friend, um, who was taking this, uh, I think it was Ochem. Fuck, I can't remember. It must it couldn't have been Ochem. But I was at UC Santa Barbara, and one of, and one of my friends was taking this class, and it was and it wasn't Ochem, but it was talking about basically the the like the seven major evolutionary steps in um in uh you know in in the species, like if you believe in evolution, and one of them like the second or third like biggest leap that creatures took on the planet, and this was even before there were plants on the planet when it was just creatures in the ocean, was uh, the mollusk had had its ass in front of its mouth. And so if it was like traveling, it would shit and then its mouth would run over its poop. And, the, and a major evolutionary leap in creatures on the planet was when the mouth was put in front of the anus so that it no longer did that. It was like and, and you can see that that's one of the uh, 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 hallmarks of, of like this ev evolution that um, scientists can see. Scientists. I'm sorry. I use that word. That how we got E. coli. <laughs> but but now here we are in 2022. And fucking, they've they've decriminalized defecating and littering in public in Kalamazoo, Michigan. It's now once again now it's once again okay to shit where you eat. It's I'm I'm I'm. I've seen some people do that out here. It's pretty crazy. Hey, do you, for those of you who believe that the polio vaccine worked, you you have done <laughs> you have done zero reading on it, and you've looked at zero of the numbers and stats. Zero. All you fucking doctors out there, scientists. Go 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 get a book on the polio vaccine and start reading about it. It was because people were fucking. It was this fucking. It was so obviously a sanitary issue. So obvious it was a sanitary issue. Yeah. All you have to do is look at the fucking graphs. Polio was on a massive decline once they fucking put in some sanitation laws long before the vaccine came out. Mm -hmm. We've known and we've known forever the measles vaccine doesn't work. Just look at fucking the, what the, how the LA Times reported the measles outbreak at, in Disneyland a couple of years ago. So fucking nuts. Hey, soon as soon as Sevon, I know you said you didn't want to talk about CrossFit games on this call show, but that last call was absolutely brutal. I, is the one we're still on about abortion? Was <laughs> he talking about my call? I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> I think I think your call was great. I love these discussions, and and you could really tell who's listening and whose mind is open versus the people that think I'm trying to push some sort of aden uh, agenda, other than everybody defining in words and becoming on the same sheet of music. Will Will you unfuck me about the law? I know we had a, a back and forth on YouTube, so tell me where I have it wrong about the law. It, because you acknowledge. And I don't want to put words in your mouth, but okay. I at least sense that you would that you acknowledge that uh, abortion is the killing of an innocent human life. And that yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know I if I would use those words, people. but yes, for, for yes, I, I, I don't, I, I, I think that um, even though I am pro-choice, it's fucking insane to think for people on the left to be mad at people at the right for wanting to stop abortion. Like what? These people are like trying to stop shit from being killed. But that's my and, point. And, it, and they're it, extremely it, racist, too, because basically the vast majority of the fucking people who are pro-abortion are like, hey, being born a black child uh, is, is a life of incredible suffering. And so black people should should have complete access to killing their babies. Be, and, and, and then and then you see it's disparate. It's fucking nuts. More, All more their premises are, are so grossly um, uh, racist. It's fucking disgusting. Anyway, go on. Sorry. More more black babies are aborted in New York city than are born. Uh, so uh, to, to your point, but fucking what I was saying, nuts. Uh, and I'm okay with that. If you want to do that, but the fucking pro, the pro choice people need to stop fucking saying that because being born a black person is such a struggle that they don't fucking deserve to live. And they deserve have, the, it, 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 they have the option to die. Fuck you. I would fucking way <laughs> rather be you. born into a life of massive struggle. I want a shot. 
I want a shot. You want Just a so shot, like Will? You, you want a shot, Will? Yeah, I got one. I'm yeah. blessed enough to have one. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> yeah, I want a fucking um, shot. Fuck you for fucking th thinking it's okay to fucking kill me because of the color of my skin, and then you think it's going to be hard for me to fuck a hard life. Anyway, go yeah. on. I'm getting all wound up. One um, of those kids could win the CrossFit I mean, Games. <laughs> yeah, for real. I mean, the only thing I'll say is if you think it is, there is something wrong, then it is not absurd to think our laws should reflect what is right and wrong. Just like we should have laws that prevent children from getting gender transition surgery because it is wrong. It is, it is, it, it is by all me and by all objective measures bad for that to happen. I we can't even believe that. that. I can't even believe that. that that's a possibility. But, but it's, but it's freedom. Sevan. It is, it's their choice, right? <laughs> but and so that it, it is illogical to to simply say because someone feels differently, we should have a law that allows it. Because there are a lot of things that people may be inclined to do that our laws thankfully prohibit. And I'm, my only contention is abortion should be one of those things our laws prohibit because it is objectively wrong to kill an innocent human life but okay oh, right right i mean I, I i and i hear you on that and, and you're right i just can't go with it because i just cannot put a law on a woman's body i just cannot but let me ask you this so this is the part i was tripping about about so um this is the part where we were fighting on youtube about it um uh i thought i, I was saying that basically the democrats should be ex exceedingly happy because Roe versus Way was overturned, because what that's done is that's taken the power away from the federal government to say whether abortions are legal or illegal. Of course, they're just frustrated. It's like it's like Godzilla comes into your town and fucking kills um, all the people you don't like. Well, you shouldn't be happy there's a Godzilla. Next time he comes, he could fucking kill you. That's just fucking like idiot thinking. You should be like, oh, fuck. That's not good. So so basically when Roe versus Way was turned over, I would think that the libs would be like, holy shit, this is fucking awesome. Now now this that same court can't, based on their decision, they can't make abortion illegal. They're saying it's not in the choice of the federal government. And I thought you were saying that I'm not looking at – I thought you were saying I'm not looking at that right. All, all the court ruled in Dobbs v. Jackson is that a right to abortion is not found – in the United States Constitution. Yes, yes, thank you. Right. Yes, great. But great. that yes. doesn't that doesn't mean a future court or the US Congress of course could not perhaps find a right to life applicable to all persons hey. born and unborn. Yeah. That that protects babies in the womb. Yeah. They, they is, how does the constitution a, not do that? that? How does the constitution not do that? <laughs> I mean, I, I think it does. The 14th I think Amendment it does too. guarantees e e equal protection uh, to life for all persons. But that's a quote. To all persons in the United States. And you may say, and, let's say you're crazy pro-choice. You may say, um, uh, you, you, you may say, soon, soon as that there's a precedent that you can kill an, un, an unborn baby or a fetus or, or, or a baby in the mom's stomach, you're setting precedent to kill other people, too. I'm, I'm, I'm anti-death um, anti penalty, too. That's fucking nuts for two, re two fucking reasons. One, if you kill someone, you've created a murderer. I'm not in the business of fucking creating murderers. Sorry, Caleb. Uh, and, uh, uh, us military. And, and the second thing is, is I'm not, I, I, the, the courts are going to be wrong. A huge percentage of the time we're going to fucking, uh, we're going to accidentally kill, um, we're going to accidentally kill innocent people. Can't do that. I, I largely agree with you. I agree with you from a policy perspective, but that there is a world where you might have to kill someone to protect other people. I understand. And that is, I understand. Of, right. I understand. So, so the death penalty in of itself is not intrinsically evil it's not intrinsically wrong because there, are, there is a way where perhaps no because there is a world where perhaps someone has been a serial killer in on the outside and then has been a threat to the people inside prison and this is a rare circumstance i think the death penalty is far too common hey, but it is what not if in, what if i killed someone in my 
let's say you came into my house and I killed you. Then it's not all of a sudden it, the, the court case is whether I was justified in killing you or not. Right. Right. If, if, and like, you and if you come into my house, I'm, I'm protecting yourself and your family. Yeah. My first thought, if anyone comes in my house, anything like I look at a cricket in my house, I'm like, everything goes through one litmus test. Could you hurt my kids? Then the second thing, what are, is there? What are the chances of you hurting my kids? That's how I look at everything. My wife buys a new knife and mm -hmm. brings it home. I look at that knife. Susa comes over. I look at him. Like my 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 own mom comes over. What's what plus or negative to my kids? Everything has to go through that filter. And if there's a tiny bit of threat that you could kill my kids, I'll fucking kill you. Like I just come over the piece of Kleenex and and uh, yesterday I fucking ended Jerusalem cricket was in my yeah. kid's bed. I ended his life. That hurt because it has the word Jerusalem in it. That's a good <laughs> identification of that insect. I love a Jew. Damn, I love me some Jew. All right, Will. Thank you. Will, great discussion. Yeah, thanks, thank guys. You. Love, love what you're doing. Okay. Yeah, thanks for the points. Stay safe over there. Thanks, yeah, put in your shoes. Love what you guys are doing this weekend too. Yeah. Thanks, bro. I, I blasted. Um, go ahead, Susie. You, I know you have something to say, and then, and then I'm not going to forget what I'm going to say. No, no, no. I was just saying that those those type of conversations are great because we should be processing, debating, giving stuff people to think about, and before everybody starts to jump to like what we're insinuating, what he's insinuating, you should just sit, listen, process, take all that information in and, and formulate. And so I think those type of discussions, especially when there's a, a disagreement as we try to reach on points are really good. And so much in today's society, everybody's like, don't disagree, don't defend. And it's like, this is a FaceTime video call. Can I do that? Whoa, that's I, crazy. I don't think I can do that. I'm just cracking um, up for these comments about Caleb over here. They're they're hilarious. <laughs> You've been reading them. Um, I I I did a, a little stand up bit um tossing uh Craig Ritchie around the other day metaphorically. I could never toss him around physically. He's too fucking big, and young, and strong. But I just tossed him around on the show, just basically talking about his content and how it doesn't sit well with me. And um, uh, I. And someone sent me this in my DMs, and I want to read it. I thought it was so, so pretty insightful. Uh, here's some perspective, Sevon, on Craig Ritchie's vlog. His early videos were all in the gym, his journey with CrossFit, learning movements, the frustrations we all went through when we first started. It was educational. For someone getting into CrossFit for the first time and after an inju injury, it gave me a glimpse into the community before I had the confidence to go myself. That's all awesome. I got my first ring muscle-up after watching one of his videos on ring muscle-ups and how he learned them. Fuck, now I'm starting to feel bad. The vlog has evolved largely because of COVID shutdowns in the UK into more of a lifestyle and less gym athlete content. But now I'm four years into it and I've gotten to know Craig and JAS. I don't know what that name is, but I'm guessing that's Jass. his wife. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Craig and, and, and Jass, to, to a point where the, the personal content, their dogs, for example, are just part of it. I've tried to turn friends onto their channel and they share your perspective. I don't think I would enjoy their content if I found it right now. But having watched since the beginning, my expect expectation and enjoyment of their content has evolved with them. God, I'm a piece of shit. Generally speaking, I crave CrossFit content, glimpses into athletes' lives, and there aren't enough, pr enough people producing that sort of content within the space. Fine. Okay, I lose. You win. Peace and love, Mr. Richie. Hello. Hi, Jennifer. How are you? Ooh, beta blockers are working. Hey. Hey. Yeah. So, <laughs> hey, man. No, my name is Charlie. Hey, uh, sorry to change the topic on you guys, but um, I've heard you guys quite often talk about like the history of Rogue and the founders of Rogue, and then I've heard you shit on Noble quite a bit. I've been, as a fan, fascinated to watch the growth of like the companies that have come out of CrossFit. I'd love to hear you guys talk a bit more about like, how those brands, like the founding stories of those brands and how that came to be and why like, you know, CrossFit was so happy to work with Rogue but not happy to work with Reebok and all that sort of stuff. How, how did you get the name Charlie? What? How did uh, you? I don't know. Parents, you know. Are you named after your grandpa or something? No, just yeah. thought it sounded good. Yeah, it's a good name. And do they call you Charles or do they call you Charlie? No, nah, Charlie. Hey, Charlie. Charlie. And, 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 and you live in the UK? No, no, no. I'm, a, I'm Australian, but I live in America. Fuck, I'm horrible with accents. Okay. <laughs> it's a, it's, it's a, it's a yeah, great... So what's, what's oh, your... someone says this is Craig Ritchie. Craig, is this you? 
No, definitely not. Oh. No, man. I'm a, I'm one of the I'm one of the bastard sons in Australia, not the UK. All right. <laughs> you know, I would love to have Bill Henniger on. Um, I would love to have uh, Katie on. Um, th- they're they're amazing people. I don't know if it's my place to tell. Um, they're they're. I, I know it's not my place, but most of the shit I say is not my place. So I don't know why I'm even starting that. But um, I, I guess I don't want to sell their shit short. I, when I, it, it is a true fucking amazing story what they did. I mean, they come from absolutely nothing, dirt, dirt fucking poor. Now I don't know what too much about Bill's background, but Katie is a fucking really hardworking talent. I mean, I think she was just put into the Hall of Fame for uh, Ohio State for basketball. And Bill was just a fucking uh-huh. regular dude like fucking Caleb here, just a dude in the military. Well, did a fucking pull up bar. Right. Well, did a pull up bar together and, and started so, selling them. So, how did, how, did, how did it come together that like CrossFit and Rogue became like a strong partnership? That dude had a, um, that dude had a CrossFit gym. And one of his clients was Katie and she's a CrossFit games champ. And then he started putting it to her and they got married or became boyfriend and girlfriend or whatever they are. And they became a power team. And they're both they're, they're uh, especially him. He's very stoic. And basically just through handshakes, he's gangster. You have to remember like these fucking people are gangster like him, uh, D- uh, Greg Glassman, uh, Dave Castro. And I mean, gangster in, in the most um, l- like in the movie terms. Like shit gets yeah, right. done. Like great, Dave, like Dave has a Dave's family has a crazy past. Greg has a crazy past. These are people who did business on fucking handshakes and eye contact, yeah. and that's all that shit. But well, they're the, fucking grinders, right? I mean, yeah, Dave comes from culture, a very right? you... fucking people like Dave who turn into Nate, SEAL Team Six operators. Like this is, and people like Bill who become and Katie, well, Bill for sure who become owners of a billion dollar company that they built from scratch, there's no comparison between even Rogue and Noble. Noble's a paper house compared to what Rogue is. Like, uh, um, it's like, um, it's like Facebook. Facebook could be gone tomorrow. It's nothing. Rogue is like real. Well, yeah, so Rogue it, is sex. It makes sense, right? Facebook is in, 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 in is genitalia or is gender. It's like Rogue, like, like you can go to f- see their 600,000 square foot facility and see the thousand employees and the blowtorches and shit. Yeah, well, it makes sense, right? Because it's, it's, it's like when it comes to any business, like if the founders are there, they're mission orientated, they started the company to solve a problem they truly care about. Yeah. And then once the founders leave, right, it all falls apart. And that's usually the same. If, if Noble is what you say it is, then it was just a brand that was created to take advantage of an opportunity. It wasn't created because they believed in the mission. I so think that they made the why, name like, before the product. I think they're like, oh, we have this great name for uh, – this is the way I've heard the story. We have this great name for a company, Noble. And then they're like, fuck, what are we going to make? Yeah. I think, that, and I, I think and it's true. Kind of, I've heard it a bunch. Yeah. I have this and amazing kind of like dick. Why, what know? am I going to do with it? I, I never hard. think – I never think that. I'm always like, fuck, I'm horny. And then I'm like, well, I got this dick. I guess it will express it. Or, or maybe I'll do something stupid like turn up my radio really loud and drive down the street trying to impress girls. But I, but I, but I don't buy the radio and then be like, I'm gonna use this to get pussy. Like it doesn't. I don't work like that. And that, that's how I feel like Noble is. They got it backwards. I never wake up in the morning and look at my dick and be like, man, I really need to get to use this today. Never. What, what am I gonna do? With do the, uh, I don't know if that metaphor minutes. sits well with you or that simile, but it sits well with me. That's good. So what's so what what's the story with um what was can you guys gonna what's the more story with CrossFit so uh so with Reebok so how come like how come like um uh the original crew was so happy to work with Rogan stuff that like had such big problems with Reebok uh why did CrossFit HQ have problems with Reebok as opposed to not we never had problems with Rogue. yeah uh, because Reebok was just their their corporate sellouts like they're not gangster. They're not gangster. They're complete fucking corporate sellouts. Hundred thousands of pages contract. Like soon as we signed with them, they put out a shoe that they claim would make your butt um, firmer if you wore it. <laughs> this is they they, this, yeah, right. they and, did. And, and and they just went to business with the first guy on earth who defined fitness with a scientific de- definition: observable, repeatable, measurable. 
Like, dude, that's a, it's even crazy. I was thinking about maybe I should do a show in the middle of the week this week that like 99% of the people at the CrossFit games don't even know what CrossFit is. They, they, they're not, they don't even know why they're mesmerized by it, about how that, like what, what really happened and what they're really have been sucked into. I mean, they, I think if you stick around long enough, everyone eventually gets it. But if he wouldn't have defined it, this shit never happens. Never, ever, yeah, ever, right. ever happens. And people don't realize that. I guarantee you the people who bought the company don't realize it. Yeah. Reebok agrees to $25 million settlement. And, and so we were fucked from day one. We like we had no chance of getting along. It's like dating a girl who's batshit crazy, but she's so hot. And you're just like, I mean, that that's what it was. I think they we were just excited that a shoe <laughs> company was interested in us. We'd have to ask. Like, Dog shit shoe. <laughs> God, <it's bad. laughs> hey, but they did make the nano too. And 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 fuck, oh man, that shoe is amazing. And I've and I'm so thankful for it. I'm Dude, so I thankful that. for it. Greg went to Harvard <laughs> Business Greg. School. Greg went to Harvard Business School and, and spoke every year for like five years in a row. And every year he started the fucking lecture by defining to these kids what fucking um, uh, business was because they, they didn't know. They think they, 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 yeah. they, their definition of business was so fucked up. And he would de- well, that's well, the, that's the balls business. that Greg had on him. He would fucking define it for him. Go ahead. So, well, yeah, I mean, the kids in uh, in Australia, they have an expression for kids to do MBAs. They call them second chances. Second chances. Yeah, yeah, I like that. It's like, oh, you didn't you didn't start you didn't start your own business as a founder. You've gone to get an MBA so you can go run somebody else's business. I I think um, Harvard may have a book that requires those guys there now to sign a code of ethics. I don't know if they follow it, but um, yeah. So now that now that now that Greg's lost his um now that Greg's lost his like the vehicle he's created to like solve to like complete this mission that he's on a mission to solve, do you have any idea or are you allowed to publicly say like how he's fulfilling that pursuit of that mission these days? Yeah, basically he uh, he he's he's basically transcended it. Now he, basically everything he learned about defining terms um he, he's 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 brought to science and he's making right now a curriculum He's making a curriculum, a movie, uh, um, a uh, a movie, a fucking book, a, a lecture, a whole any all the things you need to put to explain to people what is science. And in a nutshell, because clearly we live on a planet with people who use the word science and don't know what it means. But in a nutshell, um, science is what it allows us to predict things. That's all it is. It allows us to predict things. So anyone that believe believes uh, anyone that believes science is like real is d- doesn't know what science is. Science is just believing what offers the greatest predictive value, and tomorrow it can change, and we're open to it changing tomorrow. But it has to be have predictive value. So like climate science, it, it's com- it's it, it's complete fucking horseshit. The predict the prediction of um, uh, climatology and global warming and all that shit. If you're a scientist. Maybe it's happening, but if you're saying, and why is that? Because it hasn't been able to predict the future. And when you use the models they've created to look at the past, it doesn't predict the past. So I'll give you an example. I can predict to you when Halley's Comet is going to come next, right? It's going to come in 66 years, three weeks, two hours, and, and seven minutes. I can use that same model that I used to predict when Halley's Comet is going to come to tell you when it's been here. That it's a, it's a scientific predictive model that can look both forward and backward in time. There was no science around COVID. There's no science around um, uh, the, the, the vaccines. They offered no predictive value that was greater than chance, meaning if the people who now didn't get the vaccine have a greater chance of survival, but the science around the vaccine was supposed to make it so that you had a greater chance of surviving. That was the predictive value of the vaccine. And so there's all these people. Oh, it's not till 2061. A little yeah, I off, that but shit it's up. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, should, I should learn that. So every time I use that example, I get it right. So that's what he's doing. He's based and he everything I just told you right there. He's basically taught me in, by chewing my ear off for two hours a day every day for the fucking last uh, year. And he's meeting with the smartest minds all over the fucking world once again. It's all he's doing it with people from Hillsdale College, Stanford, Harvard, fucking you name it. And and it's all these people are like because they know Greg has the balls to do it. So and these are the these are so some of the, the most the, published scientists in the world, like John Iannadis, et cetera. Go ahead. Sorry. 
So what's, he, what's his plan for the final deliverable? So besides releasing a movie and a course, is he going to turn it into like Yeah, I think it's going to be a court, a college course, company? an elementary school course. I think he's going to make this curriculum so that it's, it's consumable by anyone. Yeah, an incredible book. And the best thing about this, what he's offering, once Greg teaches you this, you're armed to the gills. Mm -hmm. So you could go there and a doctor can be like, hey, I think you should take these statins. And you, you can be like, why? And it goes because they help people with uh, get over high cholesterol. And you can say, are those the absolute or relative values? And then the doctor will be like, uh, I don't know. And they're like, well, can you point me to the study so I can look myself? And then next thing you know, just by asking questions, you can realize, oh, that's it's a lie. They, and they, then the they, doctor they, gets really annoyed yeah. with you and then tells you to get out of his office. Yeah. <laughs> this book, yeah, I have it's going to be like Seinfeld. You can't go to a doctor anywhere because you're banned all over the place. <laughs> I got this book pulled up. I don't, I don't know if you could uh, see it, caller, but it's called Rigor Mortis. How sloppy science creates worthless cures, crushes hope, and wastes billions. And I strongly suggest everybody who's uh, watching this go check that book out. You can listen to it or you can read it. It's fascinating, but it talks about what uh, Sevon was just talking about. That Greg, Greg bought this book for every single member who wanted it, who worked at CrossFit HQ, including the entire L1 team. Yeah, I bought it because of him. I saw it on there. You'll love this book. It's great. It's good. <clears throat> Caller, thanks for calling. No problem, guys. Cheers. Okay, bye. bye. Thank you. It's funny because when I talk to the doctors that I work with, they'll I'll tell them like, hey, why don't we just tell them to work out or change their diet or whatever it is? And they're like, oh, you mean preventative medicine? I'm like, <laughs> no, that's not what I mean at all. <laughs> they're just so baffled that like anybody would even think of that. They're like, no, just fucking give them a statin or give them, give them Tylenol or fucking whatever. I'm like, you could give them so many other things that don't change their body chemistry, but yeah, you decide to just prescribe some medication and send them on their way. Wouldn't it be crazy if you went to see like a doctor or something like a mental health professional and they're like, okay, we understand. But before we start this session, I'm going to start this timer. You're going to do 50 burpees as fast as you can. And then we're going to talk about how you feel. You ready? Okay, go. And then they just like blast Dude. through the burpees and they're like, all right, now let's sit down and talk. It would change Seriously. a lot of stuff. Those yeah, that didn't have be, myocarditis. Be Sorry, go ahead, Caleb. <laughs> Uh, Devin, hi. Hi, it's actually um Jeff. Jeff. Yeah. Hi, Jeff. Hello. Jess or Jeff? Like Jeff, like Jessica. I'm oh, Jess. Oh, Perfect. Oh, Thank Jeff. you. I identify yes. as a woman. Hi, Jess. Sorry, we we freak out when there's a female <laughs> voice on the line. We don't know what to do. <laughs> I know there's not a lot of us that call in, but I've been a long time listener, so I always enjoy hearing you guys and um. Just appreciate all your content. Thank you. Yeah. And I wanted to tell you that um, I've listened to you for like over a year. When you first started actually doing podcasts again. And um, I'm back in the uh, CrossFit gym and working with nutritionists now. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, so good. Good. Congratulations. Hey, what, what so gym are you? What, what state are you in? I'm in, or I'm in uh, Santa Barbara. Oh, yeah, talked to you a couple times on awesome. PM, so. Are you born and raised? No, I was um, born in like a cornfield outside of Chicago. Okay. <laughs> but uh, I'm out here and. Is Dick Mertens yeah, your dad? Was... What was that? <laughs> Is Dick Mertens your dad? You know, he's not. Okay. <laughs> um, but could have been. Could have been. Hey, how did you end up in Santa Barbara? Did you go to school there? No, my. Um, my husband got a job up here and we were living in Ventura. So you have to either drive an hour each way or move here. Yeah. So we moved here. Did you get a good spot? He lost, his job, uh, he lost his job two weeks after we moved here. So oh, it's been, shit. Um, yeah, it was crazy, but we're fighters. You know, you just got to keep going. You can't let little things get you down. But how long have you been um, there? For you know, like four years now. Yeah. Um, do you think you guys are going to, are you going to stay there? I mean, I, um, I'm going to be a nurse now, so uh -huh. I made it into the nursing program. My husband just bought a business here. Okay. He just took over a business from my partner. So we keep doing things that like are going to keep us here, but it's so expensive. Do you have kids? No, not yet. That's what I'm working on. <laughs> That's why I, uh, you know, got to get the health in, in order and, um, you know, that's the next goal. Project. Go to a CrossFit yeah, gym and then just start 
start humping your husband and then have a baby. It's a pretty good plan. I mean, I like that. Yeah. The, the, Sue's always talks to me about the order. It's important to have the, like the order in which you do things are important. Right. Right. Uh, and not only being healthy, important to having a baby, but it'll keep you sane um, during your pregnancy and after you have the kid. I, I mean, it really working out is like, it really is a therapy for me and my wife. Like, I think oh, that when it, whenever sure. my wife says, I'm going to go work out, I'm like, oh, that's awesome. Or whenever I say, I'm going to work out, babe, I think she says, I think we, it's like, cool. It's like, you know, your mate's taking their meds. Right. Right. And it was, I mean, when before I got back to the gym, I honestly um, couldn't get down on the ground and get back up very easily. <clears throat> and last week I just did like five jumping burpees for the first time. And Holy I know shit. that sounds so pathetic, but it's so it's such a big deal, you know. No, I'm stoked for you. That's not, back that's, awesome. at all. that's not pathetic at all. That's awesome. Hey, how many days Thank a week you. are you going? I go three days a week right now. Because I have, I have a couple injuries too, so it's kind of like you got to push and then come back and push and come back. So I go three days a week solid, and then I walk my dogs the other days a week. Oh, that's good. You, do you like the um, staff at the gym? Oh, it is such a good gym. If you're ever in – you need to go. It's Pacific uh, Coast CrossFit. And they're just such a well-run organization. The I've been there are, before with uh, Greg. We went there. Oh, it's so the owners right now are Danielle and uh, Tim. Uh huh. So good. Hey, that's what you need too. You know when like there's a cute guy in one of your classes, and like that's the only reason why you go to class, and it's like it, it's like just like it's just the excuse to go, right? Or if there's a coffee shop on the way of somewhere you have to go that you never want to go, you stop at the coffee shop and it makes everything better. That a gym is like that too. You need people there that you're like almost more excited to see than the working out. And then you, you get there and you're like, Oh, I guess I'm gonna work out too. Oh, totally. Yeah. I'm like excited to go there and see all the people. And yeah, just, it's just awesome. I'm so happy to be back. And I honestly, if I hadn't been like listening to you talk about it for the past year, every day, um, I probably wouldn't have never made it back. So you, well, know, you really are helping people out there. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Makes my day. I, and, and I'm not just saying that lightly. I will, when I leave here, I'll probably like my dad's coming to visit me today. I'll probably brag to him. Oh, please do. Yeah. You know, like I was, I was heading to the life of, um, diabetes, chronic health issues while, well, you know, trying to be a nurse, which is kind of ironic or, you know, turn the ship around and, you know, the ship's turning around now. And I'm just like, I couldn't be more happy. So I really appreciate it. Awesome. Congratulations, Jessica. Congrats. Thank Jeff. you. All okay. right. Bye. Have fun, guys. Bye. Thanks for sharing. Jerry Garcia about to get some CEO shirts. Yes, sir. Paper Street Booth Coffee. Come on down. Grab your shirt. You don't have any coffee. already. Come on. So that's why you open an affiliate. Like there's no, there's no, that, that, that can, that can never get old. So imagine you're an affiliate owner and you're like, you're going and you're like, fuck, I'm done. I'm shutting this place down. And one client comes in there and is like, holy shit, you saved my life. That client just fucked you. You'll probably keep your doors open another year. Cause that person said that to you. Hey, and stuff, stuff like that too is so fulfilling. Like I've been lucky enough to land some big, big contracts with some decent uh, checks and it's still nothing like fills you up uh, emotionally and everything else like hearing stuff like that or seeing people's success in the gym and have them tell you how much it's turned their life around and the people around them. It's crazy. I'm going to, I'm going to send, uh, Oh, maybe I can just play it. Tell her to send us a message. Oh, I should have. Jessica, you're, you're in California so you can get uh, free blood work from California hormones if you want. And get a free doctor's consult if you're interested. Just use the code Sevon. It's a good point. Hey, so, oh, Sarah, I got to tell you something. I got to tell you something. Good news. I got to tell you something. Okay, uh, so I did an interview. This isn't what I'm going to tell you, Sarah. I'm going to call and tell you. Uh, I did an interview with uh, this guy, Mr. Dorst, from CrossFit TYL in Iowa. If you guys haven't seen it, you have to see it. And the day after I did the interview with him, by the way, a lot of people reached out, especially strong people like Craig Howard, and was like, hey, give me this dude's contact number. I want to help him get the resources to stay in business, which is pretty fucking cool. Mm -hmm. But I want to show you um, – Craig Howard owns Diablo CrossFit, by the way. I, I want to show you uh, 
isn't it fucking ironic? Craig Howard owns Diablo fucking CrossFit. He watched the video of a fucking struggling affiliate owner. He reaches out and says, hey, I need to be put in contact with that guy so I can help save his business. And yet this is the same guy that because he left his doors open during the pandemic and was fined tens of thousands of dollars from the city, Walnut Creek, CrossFit HQ took away, under Rose's leadership, took away his field rep uh, – um, he, he was supposed to be the guy that's the go-to uh, in, in Northern California for other affiliates to come and talk to. But because he didn't, he didn't do what the company wanted to was follow your city's policies and shut your doors, they took away that job from him. You understand what I'm saying? He told the city of Walnut Creek, fuck you. I'm staying open. He took the fines. And Rosa and his cronies over there at CFHQ were like, well, we're trying to do some political maneuvering here. And if you fight back against the city, we might not get our tens of hundreds of billions of dollars issued to us by Congress. And the other thing. So he's like, fuck you. I'm staying open. And the other thing about that story, too, is when he started to get fines uh, without his knowledge, his members went and started a GoFundMe to help support and pay those fines. And when he realized what was happening and, and he obtained the money, he goes, hey, guys, like, I really appreciate this, but we don't need this. Or, I, you know, I don't I don't need this. But we're OK. We could take care of it. And then he turned around and he paid for affiliate ships for other struggling gyms. He paid for tents so that way they could operate outside because in certain counties they were really strict and gave that money to the community of CrossFit gyms that he was responsible for. He raised money and then paid the fines for other gyms that stayed open. And part of that money that he raised was a donation that came from fucking Miranda and Julian Alcarez, the founders of street parking, not affiliated with CrossFit anymore at all. Could might as well just see CrossFit as the enemy. And they, they, she gave $5,000 to keep gyms, CrossFit gyms open. They're a fucking home programming service. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, this is, so the day after we did the interview with this guy, he got a notice from his landlord saying, get the fuck out. And it's a church, which is really sad. And it's probably cause he couldn't pay his rent, but that's his big, beautiful gym. He said, and so this is a couple days ago, 14 hours ago. I'm so proud of bill. He's already lost weight, lowered his blood pressure and consistently attends our 415 class. He started with our basic intro package fundamentals, one-on-one -on -one session to learn the basics, first nutrition coaching from Cassie. Then he started group class. Here he is celebrating, saving dude lives. This is a gym in the middle of fucking Iowa. If you are not from the United States, you can't even imagine this place. Uh, it, it's a massive, massive land. And in the middle of this massive land um, is a place called Iowa, full of uh, farms and pigs and roads with potholes. And there's someone there trying to save people's lives in between their stops to Popeye's Chicken and McDonald's. They're not free. You stole a CEO shirt. <laughs> what the hell, asshole? Here's the thing, dude. I Those didn't want bucks. you. I didn't <laughs> want you guys. Here's the th here's the thing. I didn't want you guys to know they were free. So you guys would. I was hoping like a ton of you knuckleheads would buy them online first. I didn't want to be like, yeah, we're giving away a thousand free at the. Even though I was so excited, and I think I let it slip a few times. I wanted you guys just to buy the shirt so I could. <laughs> So you can donate to your favorite hey, athlete. Hey, California Hormones paid for those shirts. And you know why they did that? Because that chick fucking listens to the show. The whole, this whole thing is just crazy community driven. Mm -hmm. She paid for a thousand shirts, the California Hormones lady, uh, and, and, and said gave them away free at the games. Hi. Oh, Corey, you keep getting screwed. Every time you call, you call too late. Joshua, how can I help you, my friend? Okay, this is weird, but it's Victoria. Um, I don't Hi, know, Victoria. but I'm on my phone. Victoria, what's Hi, up? Hi, I, I'm not. How are you? I'm good. Um, I just want, well, I just popped in. I was making breakfast, and I just wanted to say thank you guys for all that you guys are doing. Um, in the light of all the stories you guys were sharing, um, this podcast has been a big part of my weight loss journey and getting healthy and turning my life around. So I just wanted to say thank you. Well, and when you say, when you say this show has been a, a large part of your weight loss journey, are you like fucking that misogynistic, homophobic, <laughs> racist, Sevon Matosian, I'm going to lose weight and show him. Is, is that, is that what you no, I, I'm not, um, woke. Um, oh. no, <laughs> No, well, I mean, I'll, I'll help anyone I can. If someone wants to leverage me like that, I would. I, I'm open to it. As long as my anus doesn't get prolapsed, I'm open to it. 
Oh, wow. Yeah. No, that's, no, that wasn't. <laughs> um, I, I've been, it's more so, I think just the consistency aspect. And, um, I, I've lost, um, about 90 pounds now. And, um, like I would literally just turn on the podcast and go on a walk for as long as the podcast would go on. So sometimes they were really long. Sometimes they were 45 minutes. It just kind of depended. Um, but that was kind of where I started and it was just really cool to, I found it kind of right when I started losing weight and, um, I was just thinking about it yesterday, like, whoa, a lot has changed since then. And part of it is just being able to stay entertained while working out or, or going on a walk. Um, other times it's just to kind of stay in the know. I'm not like a crazy CrossFit person. Um, like super, like I don't go to a CrossFit gym anymore, but um, I still do a lot of the, those types of workouts and stuff. So I just appreciate it. Um, uh, how old are you? I'm 24. H- how do you do day one of the, um, so, so you say you lost 90 pounds. Is there a day one? Is there like a rock bottom or is there like a fuck I'm going to do? Like, how do you make that? What this, did something happen or did you try? Is it like quitting smoking? You try so many t- times and, and, and then finally um, one time it sticks. How long did it take to lose the 90 pounds? I'm sorry. So many questions. So I started, I started in November of 2021. Okay. November. Um, and where do you live? What state? I, I live in Idaho now. Okay. The potato state, mm-hmm. but I actually grew up um, in Livermore and I, that's how I know Matt. I've known him for quite a while. So. Oh our, shit. That's oh how, shit. Yeah. It's a small world. <laughs> wow. Um, Day one, it was a lot has changed for me in the past year. I'm a nurse. I left the hospital after the vaccine shenanigans happened. Um, I was working night shifts and I was extremely unhealthy. I was just convinced, like, I literally felt like I was going to die. Like, I just was like, well, I'm just going to be one of those people that just is going to die. I mean, I just, I felt horrible. My, I could barely walk. Like, my, my ankles were. And it felt like I had ran three miles and I was literally just getting up out of bed. Um, and so after I left the hospital in August of last you mean year, you'd be, wi- you mean you'd be winded like that. Like you get out of bed, take a shit, come back and you're winded. Like, sw- like and sweat, maybe sweaty even. Not sweat, just like I, like my, my bones hurt. And for no, oh. for no reason other than I was extremely overweight. Yeah, I can't. You know, I can't even relate to that. That's fucking fascinating to me. So heavy that your bones hurt. And and yeah, I mean, I I used to do um, like competitive Olympic lifting, so I I was I know what like sore felt like. I knew what that felt like, and it was nothing like that whatsoever. It was just like how I just felt like I had ran three miles. That that's kind of just where it was. Um. So I left the hospital in August of last year and started working from home um, and was just kind of one day was like, I'm, I'm done. Like, I, I know that I know my potential. I know the things that I've accomplished in the past. I know that that's not who, like, I'm not living into the person that I know that I could be. And I'm not just going to like sit around here and wait for something to happen. And I just, it just started like literally with walking and then slowly changing my eating habits. And um, then I was to the point I had gotten a Peloton cause I literally was so scared to go to the gym, which was weird um, just cause I had, you know, grown up like at a CrossFit gym and that was very normal and safe to me. Um, but once I kind of, just because like, you, what people would food, say, you're like, Oh, I don't want to go in there and yeah. have people stare at me. And I don't want to wear clothes that are all fucked up because I'm too overweight. Yeah. Like I, I mean the gym that I've only, my husband and I moved here two years ago, two and a half years ago. And I, I mean, I have a lot of friends at the CrossFit gym, but like I was, I felt like I couldn't go anywhere. I just needed to like put my head down and work like on myself. Um, so after I got comfortable enough, like just, you know, gaining a little bit of momentum, I started going to the gym and getting on a normal, regular, you know, five thirty in the morning schedule. Um, but yeah, it's just been, it's just been a, it's been life changing to say the least, but 
how do people yeah. not work out? Do you ever think that? Do you think you'll ever go back to not working out? Like, and by that I mean like, yeah. like, like uh, I used to be a crazy walker. I, I love walking. So I like when, I, especially when yeah. I first had my son Avi, I would like if, if I didn't walk five miles a day, some, I was pissed. I needed right. to walk. Um, well, and and working from home, it's different because I can take break. You know, it's just I can take those breaks and go outside and move a little bit my peloton's in my office so it may it's hard to not you dig in the peloton you like you, you like the peloton um i would rather go to the gym just because i mean it's fine i it, it got me started i still ride it sometimes um what happened what do you do like, you get on there and there's a screen and you push a button and then and is it a live class and you just ride with other people all over the world yeah, so they have live classes or just like the recordings of the live classes. Um, they're they're good. They're 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 I, nice. I really want to try I it. Rather, I, I wish they would sponsor me. I really want to try that shit. We have them here, actually. They're they're kind of fun for the military guys. You can just get on it and live. I just like the thought of doing yeah. something with other in a live class with other people and like just like and, and kind of being pushed. There's like a leaderboard next, to it so you can like yeah. see where you're at yeah. with everybody it's, else. It's really cool. It's a nice way to compete. <laughs> Oh, someone just said, have you ever shit in the shower and waffle stomped it down the drain? <laughs> I was like, don't, don't, don't. No, think I, have I have not. I have not. I have not. Even oh, I've, I've been in the shower and had to poop and been like, okay, and, and start over. You dry off and you get out and you take a deuce. I've been swimming and oh, had to get out of the pool and go take a deuce. But oh, waffle oh, stomped it down the drain. I want to yeah. vomit. Oh, God. At least it's clean. Hey, you can just wash yourself off afterwards. It's like a bidet. Oh, Great. oh my goodness. Sorry to interrupt your story. Sorry. The comments are, are just oh, weird. Oh, no. Yeah. Upper de- have you ever done an upper decker? It's a, it's a great description, waffle stomp, you know, because, like, you push it through and the po- it's like, it leaves those marks on the poop, like that pattern. It's good. It's, 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 I guess, wa- I, I I guess waffle. I, I, this guy says, I haven't happen. either. Just a question. I don't believe you. No way. I, I'm guilty of reading into that. I read into no that. Way. You got it's all trapped in my head now. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Jeez, hey, um, uh, d- d- you said you walk your dog. Um, I didn't, but I do have a dog that requires a lot of walking, so I have to walk him. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. Kind of I, 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 I thought I thought you said you, you, you walk a lot and you have a dog. Uh, do, do you ever um, – I'm just trying to figure out if we could be friends. Do you ever let pick let your, your dog – does your dog ever poop and you don't pick it up? Um, I My husband would get very mad at me if I did that because <laughs> I – like the shitty oh. side of my personality would yeah. probably just let it go, but – I have. I'm I swear, like, no, I'll whip I your ass. I would just pull live. over and just beat the fuck out of you if I saw you do that. Hey, you, Simone, can, you can't talk like that to I'm girl. Aware. I cannot. You motherfuckers, let your dogs poop everywhere. How big's your dog? How how is large is the what average kind of dog poop of your dog? <laughs> yeah, what kind of dog? Um, is I like how you would. That's how many times there. I punch you. If you got a great day and I'm fucking kidnapping you, the if it's a little feet. chihuahua, I might no, just I slap have... you around a little bit. I have a German short hair pointer. Oh, it's a big deuce. God. It's a big no, deuce. No, he's not big. He's 40 pounds. Oh, that's not bad. Hey, that's a great dog. <sighs> yeah, dog. he's he's actually away at training camp right now because he's such a shit. So I, I, I've always so wanted a pointer. Man, they're fucking cool. Yeah, they're, he's, a, he's a good little companion to go on long walks with. Like a and Vishla. And he will never complain about more exercise. <laughs> I want a Vishla. Yeah. They're awesome. All right. Well, thank you for calling. I'm sorry I had to threaten to beat you up. It's okay. okay. It's not the first time I've had that threat against me. It's all good. All right. <laughs> thanks for sharing, Victoria. I'm glad you called. Yeah, thanks for all you guys do. Have a good rest of your day. Okay. Get Order lots of poop bags. You can never have too many poop bags. Put them everywhere. Oh, look at it. They're so cute. Yeah, they are. <laughs> All right, talk to you guys later. Okay, bye. Corey Pueblo, bye. Pueblo, Cory. I'm so sorry. You've called and, I, and you just keep missing the fucking. Um... Hey, and you could definitely be friends with uh, Victoria. When she was younger and, and her mom first started to come to the gym, we expanded out the old spot that I was at. And we asked if anybody would come help, like, move and cut up the mats. And she was definitely, like, the VIP worker. Like, she was, like, cracking the whip and she stayed the whole time. And, and she was, like, at that time, I think she was, like, 17 or something, maybe. 
or 18, like she was young and was there on her own time and, and crushed it. So she's a hard worker and, and her and her mom and her dad and stuff, they're great family. She sounds like a great person. She is. Yeah. She sounds fun. Uh, uh, Sam Dancer isn't doing rope climbs and ran off the field. Sam Dancer just pulled, uh, Sam, Sam Dancer walked off the field. Sam Dancer just pulled out, pulled out of what? Looking pulled out of now. Paris. Pulled out of your dad. Pulled out of your mom. <laughs> pulled out of your mom. Uh, I hope he's okay. That doesn't sound good. Um, can we go? Let's play something. Um, can we go to <laughs> hour um, twenty in? <laughs> uh, I don't know if I should play that. That's kind of crass. That like waffle to... stuff comment was just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Um, what's the play 307? It says bush trim. Oh, what is that? What is that? Bush trim 307. Oh, I was gonna say, okay, do you have those notes? Because I could pull it up too if you need me to. The bush trim. Hey, I'm gonna do something crazy. It's probably one of the craziest things I've ever. Oh, this is amazing. This is this is amazing. My brother's doing the Lord's work out in Portland. First of all, Portland needs Lord's work. Look at that. Someone drew, someone drew a woman's <laughs> a woman's thighs, legs, and hands. I'm assuming I think it's a woman. It looks like a woman's hips around on a wall that had some overgrowth the side. And then the brother came and trimmed the bush down into a V. Like, can you play that? I want to see the now look at this. God, it's so good. Oh, so it's now just music at... for us to get in trouble. Yeah. yeah, it's like kill that. God, that's so wonderful. That's art. Do you see that, Beautiful. Sousa? Yeah. I've seen a bunch of different things like that, but not as uh <laughs> not as good a placement as that one. <laughs> <laughs> hey dude, that's where I would take my kids to teach them about uh anatomy. I'd be like, come on, we're going for a walk, boys. Let By the way, that you. is the illegal street art. I like that top one. I like that shit wild myself. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if he, but 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 I appreciate the. Uh, is that a bank? Hey, fee? that's a. What's crazy is is that's a that's a collaboration. The dude who drew it, and then the dude who's working on the bush. It's so I, I think I, I think it's the same guy. If it's a bank, you know who Banksy is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's and, and that would make sense if that is him because he dresses as like a street worker sometimes or oh. something like that, and like totally blends in. Would Sevon sweatbands fit one of Caleb's fingers? Probably, barely. It'd be tight. It'd be tight. It'd be tight. <laughs> Uh, number 30, uh, number 305, DEI approved. <clears throat> 305, DEI approved. I think these are, I hope these are all funny ones. I need some funny shit. It looks like Sam Dancer is injured. Well, if he ran off, man. Yeah, that's so. what, like, that's what it I'm looked like he went for the judge and like shook his hand. Was signed oh, I thought this was great because look at all, look at the diversity. I, I oh, look at the diversity of this family. They got the old people, the young people, the black people, the Mexican people. I think I even saw like a Sikh in there. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, and they got a dwarf in there. You see that? Hey, that must be like, a, they must be visiting like their grandkids at college, right? Wow, it's almost oh, like in the U.S., everybody, uh, with the exception of what the media presents, gets along. <laughs> I know. It's and enjoys great. each other's company. That's so weird. I Regardless. Uh, number 304, this guy needs to be put on time out. You guys, you guys we're, we're taking a break from the games. We're taking a break from the how cool is it that Boz came on last night? So cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is so uncool. Look at this guy. Hey, this is this this is this game is so stupid. This pickleball game. These are the kind of goofballs who play it. Look at what the he fuck? Throw, 
he throws his paddle in anger and hits one of the oh, opposing yeah. players. Oh. Immediately bad ass. about it. Horrible. So he's like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. Fucking tagged him. <laughs> One time in a game of foosball at the old house I lived at, I kept losing to my <laughs> to my roommates, and I got pissed and I took the foosball and I was like, "Damn it!" And I threw it at the ground and it bounced up and broke this like plane window that of the house oh. that we were renting, and that's exactly how I felt. Uh, uh, uh th- th- I threw a golf ball at my sister once and broke a window in the house when I was a kid. I was so scared. My mom came home; she wasn't even mad at me. I did that when I was like 22 years old. I broke a window with the lacrosse ball, and I I took it was 22 years. I was, did nothing wrong, and then I broke a window. And it was devastating. I felt like a 12 year old. Like at your parents' house? Yeah. Yeah. And it was like my neighbors. It was the neighbors that I broke the window of. And I went over there and I was like, "Can I fix it?" And they're like, "No, nah, it's cool. We'll fix it." And then I think we checked on it like five or six years later, and it's still broken. Oh damn. They were making meth in the basement. They didn't want anyone fucking with their shit. <laughs> they were really sketchy neighbors, I will say that. Uh, 302, smoking with a mask on. Anything is possible. This one where he's playing... Oh, it's gone. It is? Yeah. Is that the one where he's playing slots? I think so, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. And he's just... That's hilarious. Okay. Um, how about, uh, 298, she's fucking born in Mexico. Bam. Oh, yeah, okay. This lady, this, l- l- go go down, this is CNN. L- l- go down the other way. Uh, so, sorry, up, up. This is CNN... In their opinion section, they're allowing this. These GOP Latina candidates are not the real deal. This fucking lady was born in Mexico. She worked in fields picking strawberries and shit. They're not the real deal, though. I, I'm, it, it's, uh... How? 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 It's like when they said Larry Elder was a, uh... A white man in blackface, the black dude who ran for governor of California to do with the black skin. I don't get it. Yeah, it, everything so everything has gotten so weird. You try to twist it all. That's just trying what to twist do you it. want? Right. They want their uh, agenda pushed, and anything that goes against it has inherently wrong. Uh, two two ninety two ninety five. Um, how racism works. Oh, this one might be fun. I hope this is funny. Not funny? Funny. Not funny? Funny. White person told me that I'm less than because of the color of my skin. I've never once had a white person tell me that there was something wrong with my hair. I've never once had a white person tell me that I was too big. I've never once had a white person even tell me really that I was too loud, and I probably am. I've never once had those things, but my community has labeled me those things and told me that my skin color was ugly and told me that my hair was nappy and told me that they don't date black girls and told me that I was too loud and told me that I was too much. So when I was raised, I was raised with white people, a ton of white people. I was the only black kid in a lot of situations and I never once was demeaned for it. If anything, my black, my white friends think that I'm so cool. They think I should run for the freaking mayor of their town. (laughs) And I'm not even lying. I'm not even lying. I didn't learn oppression. I didn't learn victim mentality until I started listening to my black friends. And that's flat out. I know people don't want to hear it, but let's talk about it. Tell me what you think. She's hot as fuck. That's what I think. <laughs> Very good point. I've asked, I've asked some of my, my coworkers. That's, I just stared at her. I was just looking at her skin the whole time. I was like, she's fucking hot. She does have great skin. Uh, okay, sorry. What were we going to say? Okay. I've, I've asked my friends the same question. I was like, because I mean, I've, I guess friends, coworkers, whatever, um, who are black. And I was like, so what, when, like, tell me your experiences. Like, tell me what, when you've been the victim of racism or what, what have you experienced essentially? And they can't really give me any sort of answer. They're like, oh, well, I have a friend who said that they experienced this one thing. And I'm like, okay, but have you experienced it yourself? Like, have you had anything happen to you? And like of the 10 plus people that I've talked to about it, they just, none of them can give me an answer. 
they just say like, well, it's out there. It's out there. I promise. I'm like, everything's out there. <laughs> yeah. Everything so is like, out you, there. It's of course it's out there. You're just allowing it in your head because you've heard it somewhere on CNN or you've heard it somewhere from your friend or whatever. Hey dude, I've had it happen to me in seventh grade. I was going over where they had all the, you know, when you turn in a paperwork and the teacher would just kind of lay them over to one side and be like, okay, go over there to pick up your project or whatever. And yeah. I walked over and these two guys were standing there and they had mine. I was like, oh, that one's mine. And it was like a mix of a bunch of seven, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade all in one class because it was like one of the elective ones you could take. It was our class. Right. And he looked at me and he goes, oh, this one's yours. And he throws it on the ground and he goes, Mexicans pick it up off the ground. <laughs> oh, shit. And I was like, oh, shit. So oh, sh your teacher did that? No, 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 no. It was one of the so kids in the class. Grader. Yeah, I was an older eighth grader. And I think I was either sixth or seventh grade and said that. And I was kind of like, remember thinking like, that's weird. Like, I'm not, I'm not Mexican. And like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what if you'd have been that? Fuck you, I'm Mexican, I'm black. <laughs> Why'd you throw it on the ground? Like, it's ridiculous. Hey, I had this teacher in the so seventh cool. grade. I really liked him, but he was fucking weird. And I'm pretty certain he was gay. I really liked him, though. And he, and, and I, but I didn't like him coming close to me. And I didn't like him touching me, like getting close to me at all, like too close to me or put his hand on my shoulder or nothing. And one day in class, he put his fingers in my ear. He came up behind me. Like a what, Willie? No, just like put his fingers in my ear, just like touch my ears. And I pulled away and I jumped up. I go, hey, don't do that. And it was in front of the whole class. And this motherfucker, I swear to God, he goes, oh, Seba must have been molested or something. By you, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? That was it. I hated him after that. I fucking hated him after that. Wow. What a piece of shit, Mr. Boylan. I'm sure he's dead. Yeah, I fucking hated him after that. Wow. That yeah. guy molests people. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. That really fucking pissed me off. I was like, really? Crazy. God. What the fuck? And you know what's funny too? I, I think I told my parents that. But they were just too busy working. They're like, yeah, stay away from him. Don't be alone with him or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. To my kid, I fucking go down to the school and be like, listen, fuck not. Beat some ass. You're going to go out to your car today and all your windows are going to be broken and your tires are going to be slashed. And it, the, if you ever say anything to my kid again, it's going to that it's going to be worse than that. Um, so about what happened to the Afghan affiliate owner? It's not on the map anymore. You interviewed him on the CIA podcast. Yeah, I'll reach out to him. I, I need to get him back on. I'm, I'm still friends with him. Uh, Tyler uh, Sh 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 Shin Garris. Yeah. I'll, I'll reach out to him. Why can't I remember his name? I still text with him. Uh, good morning. I'm sure you've heard, but in case you haven't heard, Dancer is pulling out of the games. Yeah, something wrong with his bicep. Who is that? Is that? Oh, is yeah. that the? I, I can't a... tell if that's Ricardo Montalbond or Manny. Did I give the PMI guy my phone number? It looks like him, but I also have a friend named Manny Serrano. I have one. Sam Dancer out. Jen Dancer said he felt a sharp uh, bicep pain two days ago. Uh, damn. Um, well, he's, he's trying to be a cyclocross guy now anyway, so I think he was just kind of doing this for fun. He's Wow, he's a huge cyclocross guy. Yeah, which that sucks that that happened because – it was his first event, and when we had him on here, he was talking about how his whole year and everything, he had, like, really dedicated himself to his training and being disciplined for it. And it just sucks when, you know, somebody puts that much effort into it and something like that happens on this weekend. I'm bummed for Sam. Me too. That does suck. He's a good yeah. dude. I mean, it's probably the noble shoes he was wearing. Um, <laughs> no, number, number 287, Chinese and dumb liberal kids. Oh, no. And then I think it's time to go play. I can, I can hear my mom's here playing piano with the boys. I should go out there. Oh, I think he posted like something like this the other day, and it made me laugh hysterically. Okay, let's see. No? no? Why not? What's up, man? How you doing? You like my costume? You are a show. Like my outfit? I mean, not particularly. It strikes me as pretty insensitive. Really? Why is that? It's from a, another cultural trip. Uh, it's not really something you should be like using as a costume, really. Does my outfit make you mad? <laughs> no, good. Good? Yeah. All right, tear it down. Tear it down. Tear it down. Do you have to be Chinese to wear this? 
You don't have to. Anybody can wear. What do you think of my outfit? Uh, 我很喜欢你这种衣服，很好看。You really like it? Yeah. Looks good. Good. What does that mean? Gonna go with good. Do you like my outfit? Wow. What is wrong with what? What is wrong with our kids that they that that how? And, and that's the magic of words. Someone uses the word cultural appropriation as like in a negative way, and then all of a sudden it's this negative thing. It's fucking hilarious. I love the one with the sombrero. Same thing. Yeah, same thing. Like, dude, yeah, I saw that one too. College like, kids are great. so fucking dumb. They're ruining it, their it, lives. It's the same thing over here. Like, if you wear something similar to what they wear out, wear out here, they they think it's really awesome. They like. Oh, of course it. they do. If you try to like, if you try to speak the same language, like, they don't fucking care, dude. They just appreciate you're trying to like be one of them or like just befriend them. It doesn't fucking matter, dude. Dude, Nobody when cares. I would go to my friend's house and they would, the parents would make like some Armenian dish. It it only made me feel like. Better if I like, yeah right but they're, they're trying it doesn't yeah who cares yeah and, yeah and even if they're making fun who cares I never cared it's so crazy and that's once again that's the projection that's the exact projection that the Democrats put on the Chinese people they now they put it on white men they put it on black people it's the same it's the same fucking playbook every time it's more on central fucking insanity and they they probably never talked to somebody of that culture ever in their life. And if you want to know all about it, you can ask Andrew. We you can ask Andrew Weinstein over at CrossFit HQ. Just email him, Andrew Weinstein at CrossFit .com. You can ask him all about what it means to be the purveyor of hatred and slavery and maintain it exists. Sanity. Don Fall, I want to tell you you're welcome on the show. You better do it quick, buddy. I'm getting huge. I'm getting all too big for my britches. Gonna be bigger um, for the Don Fall, apparently. I'm excited for you, um, but man, this shit's getting big. This shit is getting big. We're scheduled out like three months, but I'd squeeze you in, Donnie. Man. Squeeze you in. <laughs> Sque uh, yeah. Mr. Aztalazaz Bernard, how can I help you? What's up? Uh, I was actually just uh, talking about like, the whole appropriation thing you guys were talking about. Okay. And I've spent, you know, I did 12 years on active duty and like you go to other countries. And they love when you just um, acknowledge them in their language, just saying hello, goodbye, Korea and like the Middle East and stuff. And this is the only place that I've lived or been to where it's like, oh, you're being cultural, you're appropriating, and you're being mean and hurting feelings. It's, it's all That's ass backwards. It's exactly all right. We live with those are all pussies. We, it's all it's like, ass backwards. It's Anytime I've ever gone to any country anywhere, they appreciate you trying to converse with them, trying their their food, trying their, their garb, outfits. wearing their outfits, yeah, exactly. all that shit. Yeah, it never fucking matters to them because they don't give a shit. They just appreciate yeah. that you're trying. Mm -hmm. Like going going to the Middle East, they'll they'll give you like their head their head wraps and stuff, and it's cool. They like seeing people wear. Like for them, it's almost comical. They're like, oh, look at these, almost like look at these idiots, but they're not mean about it. Yeah, but right. They appreciate exactly. It. And I don't think the problem I've, I've realized is, you know, being um, prior active duty and now working as a contractor and stuff and still being able to travel is people in the U.S. don't realize how, how like, how lucky and how sheltered we are. Like when they people live in are like, well, I've anymore. done this and I do this. And I'm like, have you ever smelt the souk and, like, the food being cooked fresh, like the non bread being fre baked fresh yeah. and, like, Jordan or in you know Al Udeed or did you, you know, say Jordan? Yeah. Mm, okay. Um, uh, I went to Petra a few years ago, so it was pretty sweet there. You ever heard of um, that place, Caleb? Petra. Never heard of never, it. Never heard of that. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's one of the what is it? The seven wonders or eight wonders or nine wonders of the world, whatever it's called. Cool. Um, yeah, so, but yeah, like, this is, you don't realize how, like, a lot of people don't realize how lucky they have it. And, like, you know, you're in, like, I have been to Africa, and, like, you see kids, like, they're just wanting water. You you know, they're so appreciative of the little things that we do for them that you come back home and you're like, oh, 
for home. And it's just people are like bitching on their iPhones about anything that they can. It's like, come on, guys, get out of the world. Get out of your bubble. Entitlement, man. Entitlement. Half the world walks 10 miles for water, and I'm pissed off because the the, the flow rate and the way um, my my sink put, spits out water. <laughs> <laughs> true. It's so true. Son of a bitch. <laughs> but it is what it is. But uh, also appreciate the coverage you guys have been putting on this weekend. It's been awesome. Thank you. We just did this show. Uh, tried to do a non-game show to cull the herd. Because I know people are yeah, probably and listening and getting shocked when they hear the shit that comes out of my mouth. So I thought we would... <laughs> I actually love listening to you when like it's not games related. I love CrossFit and stuff, but I love when you get real because I don't think I don't think enough people um, think well. They think like you do, but they just don't vocalize it because they're afraid of how they'll be looked at. Tell me how huge the show and is going to get, and how rich I'm going to get. You're going to get. You're going to blow up, man. Okay, good. Thank you. I believe we needed that. You. I believe you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm with it. Hey, this what is, what I the fuck to... is your name? The phone, it just looks like someone took a handful of letters and threw them on my phone. <laughs> it's uh, it's Ostalaza is my last name. Ostalaza. What is that? Uh, Spanish by descent. I'm Puerto Rican, but I'm like really white raw or white washed. Ostalaza. <laughs> it's a pretty name, but it also sounds like one of those creatures like in a uh, Dr. Seuss book. Ah, the Ostalaza. <laughs> It's got like a fucking six foot nose. That's great. Yeah. That's awesome. All right. Thanks for calling, brother. And thank you for your All service. Right, fellas, appreciate it. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Another man fighting for our freedoms. Did you guys see that day one of the CrossFit games got hit with a cock? I know. We I started off the show with that. And just ridiculous. Just more more and, and, and it won't be flown. It won't be sent up the flagpole there because it's just people banging people and there's no accountability and it's just Gerardo Camacho. If the me so so here's the thing. If you want, here's a good example. Industrialized science is science that has to work. That's what fucking Adrian Bosman is doing. Adrian Bosman is putting on this show, and it fucking has to work. The bikes have to work. The pedal, the scoring system, the clocks that let us um, say, "Hey, meet at this time." The cars that drive the people there. What you're seeing is a product of industrialized science, meaning meaning it's the business. What you're seeing on the media department over at HQ is what you call academic science. None of it matters. There's no fucking accountability. None of it's true. It's all just fucking people jerking off on each other. If you don't ex- ex- know exactly what I mean, look at the replication. Look up, Go to Wikipedia and look up replication crisis and be prepared because you are going to freak out. And let me tell you, Wikipedia is downplaying it. You have to know Wikipedia is woke. So if they're reporting on that shit, it's like, holy shit. Uh, Gerardo Camacho, thank you. Uh, cool last name, Camacho. I wonder if you're uh, what famous Camachos you're related to. Uh, Jan Clark, dude, always giving up the loot in, from his rowboat. Um, I still think you should have Stoltman brothers on. I don't know who that is, but I would love to have them on. I would love to. Should be a DM with their uh, IG handle and stuff, and we'll look into it. I, I, I've been getting, I, I'm going to tell you, I've been getting slapped around a little bit by Dave lately. He has been slapping me around. It's okay. I'm trying not to get slapped around. I want to make Dave happy. He's a cool dude. Fuck it. Beyond cool. He's not a cool dude. I view him as a uh, as a mentor and a leader. So um, he's beyond cool. Maybe he's not even cool. Okay. Uh, hour and 42 minutes. Caleb, thanks for coming on. Matt Susan, thanks for coming on. I'm going to go work out, play with my kids. The thing is this. I don't know when the event is taking place. Can anyone tell me for sure? And then we will come on one hour before that, and I will invite uh, J.R. Howell <clears throat> and um, Taylor, the uh, the thumb self from SMTP programming, and maybe some other people. Anyone know? Keep thinking someone's going to – oh, tw- uh, 12.45 Pacific time. Okay, so that is it. Okay. So at 11.40 in – hour- in three hours, we'll be live then at 11.45 a.m. Pacific time. Is that really true, Eric? Do you know that? Uh, let's see. This is where I start to get worried. Look at look at this. This is um, Jim Johnson. Oh, great name. Uh, no, not that. Uh, right here. Sorry. Ethan Maz says uh, 2.30 central time, which would be 12.30, which would mean we should come on at 11.30. Okay, that's close enough. 
Okay, I'm gonna schedule the show for 11:45. I'm gonna send it uh, over here to the official games text thread. Did you? And okay, we schedule a show for 11:45. What were you gonna say? Nothing. It's this right here. Okay. Uh, today they drew an adaptive uh, at 1 p.m. Central Time. All athletes competing in CrossFit Games will parade by country. Okay, so we know it's not at one. Oh, I see what you're showing me. Two third. Okay. The block okay, there. so sorry. So I am going to go at 11.30. I mean 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. You cool with that, you guys? 12.30, 1.30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Look, it was liked by Tyson Oldroyd. Awesome. <laughs> former former Let's co-worker of mine. Fuck, Sevon. It's at 11, 12.45 Pacific Time. The morning Chaga posted it, and so did other media outlets. Fuck, Sevon? I guess too. Okay. Uh, PMI. Uh, I want to know what happened to his bicep. Okay. Me too. We'll look into it. That'll cost you forty nine ninety five. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Uh, you're always a good dude, PMI. 